you have arrived at your destination. Hi, this is Gene Simmons from KISS, and you're listening to Sean vs. Wild. And guess what? Now that you've heard this, you owe me $29.95. Go to kissonline.com. Boom. All right, Wildlings, you wanted the best. You got the best. The hottest podcast in Louisville, Kentucky, the Sean versus Wild podcast. I'm your host, as always, the man, the myth, the Sean Thriller Smith, the guy putting rad back into talk radio. It is Tuesday, July 3rd. We are on the eve of a very special birthday. I think I, I think you guys know who I'm talking about. I'm talking about America's birthday. That's right. Tomorrow, Independence Day, July 4th. I hope you guys uh, have a fun and safe holiday filled with all the important stuff. Beers, burgers, brats, and blowing shit up. All the essentials, <laughs> guys. And to celebrate uh, Independence Day, to celebrate America's birthday, who better to celebrate with than Iron Falcon? That's right. Iron Falcon rides again, and they are back in the studio with me today. So going to give you a little jump start uh, to your holiday here. We're going to be sitting down. We're going to be talking about their highly anticipated EP. Guys, it is coming out. Official release date, July 27th, called Neighbor of the Beast. And uh, we're going to sit down and talk all about the new EP. Also, exclusively here on the Sean vs. Wild podcast, you guys are going to be the first people to hear their brand new single called Tennessee Sky. We're going to be checking it out today right here on the podcast. And tomorrow, on July 4th, they're going to be dropping Dropping the music video on YouTube. So uh, definitely celebrate uh, July 4th with Iron Falcon and celebrate July 3rd right here on the Sean vs. Wild podcast. So yeah, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Uh, also, I want to take care of a little bit of business. If you like the way this podcast sounds, which something tells me this isn't your first Sean vs. Wild podcast you listen to, but if you do like the way this podcast sounds, uh, Joe Brock is also going to be offering his dial booping services to you. So if you have a podcast or you want to start a podcast, he's got you set up as far as editing, mixing, mastering goes, even going to set, set you up with a custom theme song for a low, low price. He's going to make it happen for you, make you guys sound just as good as me. Uh, all you have to do is email Joe Brock at Brock and Roll Productions, Brock and Roll Productions, Joe Brock at Brock and Roll and uh, shoot him an email and he's going to get you set up and make you sound like a biscrillion dollars, just like me. Thanks, Joe. Also, big shout out to my sponsor at Audible. Audible, you guys know them. It's an Amazon company. They have over 180,000 audiobooks for you to choose from. And if you want to get in on some of that action, you can do so for absolutely free. They're going to set you up with a 30-day free trial. All you have to do is go to audibletrial.com slash Sean versus Wild. Audibletrial.com slash Sean versus Wild. Uh, go ahead and get signed up. Choose yourself an audiobook. If you don't like it, you can return it. Get yourself another one. That's what's up. And they also have exclusive podcasts there on Audible. And most importantly, it helps support the show big time because each time you sign up for that Audible 30-day free trial using audibletrial.com slash Sean versus Wild, they are going to send me a little check in the mail. That helps me keep the lights on here in the Smithsonian. So uh, definitely would appreciate you guys doing that. Great way to uh, um, support the show for no money out of your pocket. And also, guys, I uh, want to tell you all about Revival Recordings, Revival 52 playlist. That's right. Revival Recordings is releasing one brand new single each week in the year of 2018. And the guys, you're going to find so much awesome new music. That's where, you know, June Divided, for example, I had them on a couple weeks ago. I've had the Funeral Portrait on. I've had a lot of, uh, I've had Alisana on. Uh, a lot of great bands from Revival Recordings. Uh, and you, you're going to be able to check out all the new material. Keep afloat of everything going down. All you have to do is go to ffm.to slash revival52 and follow that playlist. ffm.to slash revival52. Follow that playlist. They're holding a, an awesome contest. Once they get a thousand followers there, they're going to be giving away an Amazon Echo to one of those lucky followers at random. So uh, hopefully it's me, but if not, hopefully it's you. So make sure you go ahead and sign up now because who doesn't want an Amazon Echo and who doesn't want awesome new jams? That's what's up, guys. All right, let's keep it short and sweet here. It is time to go America all over everyone's asses on this week's episode of the Sean vs. Wild podcast. Iron Falcon back in the studio. Let's get wild for America. <laughs> We got him ripping a bong. So, uh, lady. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the bald eagles hanging out with the Iron Falcon tonight. Uh, one of the earliest, I said tonight, but it is one of the earliest podcasts I've done in a hot minute. Uh, after a long night of partying, uh, the Falcon came over. Uh, 
pretty early. You guys are very punctual. I can at least tell you that. You guys are like the spinal tap of uh, Southern Metal. <laughs> <laughs> Super punctual. <laughs> very punctual uh, in, your, in your arrival. And uh, yeah, so here we are. It's barely noon. Ooh. And uh, we're already a few uh, Bud Lots deep. And we're making it happen. But guys, welcome back to the show. What's up, man? What's up, man? We got the Goins. We got Doty coming in hot. The brothers, Chris. <laughs> coming in red hot here uh, to the Smithsonian. It's good to see you. Dude, we uh, spent a little time outside earlier. And uh, I feel like I just have to talk about it. I don't want to be that dork that just talks about the weather all the time, you know? But today... <laughs> it's always an, a good conversation starter. Today is an exceptionally <laughs> warm day yeah. here in southern Indiana. It's maybe 100 degrees outside. Maybe. Uh, At least. Yeah. Literally, I, I walked outside with my Bud Light, and it was warm by the time we walked <laughs> back in. <laughs> so yeah. like, I gotta get another one of these. It felt like I put my hand inside of an oven when I just had it sitting on the edge of the chair. Yeah, exactly. It's like, oh. Uh, Oh, this is a little yeah. hot. I walked outside barefoot and I was like, this is a big mistake. Yeah. <laughs> like that asshole that goes to the beach and doesn't wear you know his Birkenstocks. <laughs> Dude, sand is the worst when the sun's on it. Dude, I'm gonna be I'm gonna go ahead and just go on a uh just go on a tirade here. My biggest beef, I don't like the beach, and the reason why is I hate sand. Yeah. I'm a 100% not a sand fan. I'm with you on that. I hate it, dude. It just gets in your nooks and crannies. <laughs> too coarse and it gets everywhere. Yeah, too coarse. And it's always like, okay, you know what's like. If you're a burly boy, you, you uh, sweat a little bit. Sticks to everything on your body. So you got sand everywhere, dude. You go in your car. There's sand everywhere when you get in. Fuck it, man. And the thing is, is like the biggest problem with the beach is like you're only uh, respite. I don't know. You're, you're only... Uh, the only thing that you can do is go into the dirty ass salt water to wash the yeah. sand off, and then you just get wet, and then the sand sticks to you even more. Yeah, yeah. you got to go right back through the sand. You're just fooling yourself, brother. <laughs> Which ocean water scares the crap out of me anyway. Dude, I'm not into ocean water <laughs> at all. I won't go past my waist in it. <laughs> dude, dude, I don't blame you. Well, you never know what you're going to find yeah. swimming in it alive or not. Yeah, dude. My uncle has a, or my great uncle has a beach house out in North Carolina. And, uh, uh, it's just like a two blocks away from the beach, and I still hated it. He's yeah. got this janky old shower outside <laughs> with the walls that aren't high enough, and you can see the neighbor's windows while you're in there trying to rinse all this sand off. You. Yeah, I'm rinsing sand off, but you can't rinse you can't rinse off hepatitis. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you can't rinse off some of the stuff that's going. Imagine you swam in the Ohio River. Think for a moment if you swam in the Ohio River. I've done it. Oh my God! I, <laughs> Where? Where? Not certainly not at the banks between Louisville and Indiana. Right around there. <laughs> when, I, when I was a kid, I didn't have those kinds of concerns. I didn't know any better. Just uninhibited. I mean, yeah. I'm not gonna go out there with a water bottle and fill it up. Mom, Dad, there's a body that looks like it's bloated with meth. <laughs> <and death. laughs> uh, but should, should I be swimming out there? Yeah, go ahead. I mean, and another thing too, when the when the river floods, one of my favorite things to do is just ride my bike through the flooded streets of Louisville. <laughs> right. I feel that. Yeah, dude, you should put a. Uh, Put like a ski on it, and just like jet ski, <laughs> basically. <laughs> Hell, man, we're making it happen here, brother. But guys, this isn't just the uh, I Hate the Beach podcast. This is also, I, believe could, it or not. We could do a whole podcast. <laughs> yeah, Don't worry. <laughs> I, I'm not going to stop this conversation because I personally have a lot of qualms that I need to, I feel like I have a lot of grievances I need to air out <laughs> <laughs> in regards to it. But this is also, <clears throat> listeners, the Sean vs. Wild podcast. And guess what, dude? Iron Falcon is back. Strike back. Striking back hard. Iron Falcon is... Uh, coming back with a vengeance so today the bald eagle will be interviewing the iron falcon <laughs> so i got bald chris eagle. goins chris doty here in the studio with me how you guys how are you guys today sweaty <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> nice and damp <laughs> i'm very moist for listeners out there i know every listener is probably like uh why did you have to say that word yeah but i didn't feel like that was a until word, recently man. that everybody started throwing a fit about that word i have a big i have a big problem with um words in general um <laughs> in general i don't use them i don't say them at all i just sign them. <laughs> but sometimes there are words that just like embarrass me do you guys yeah. ever have that like yeah certainly i'm not alone um, in this something about the sl sound in like slither 
slime. You know, <laughs> it, it, that, words like that, it, dude. Yeah, it, it like you know everybody's oh moist. That's such a gross word. Like that one doesn't bother me at all. But like I said, that that weird SL sound, something about it just gives me goosebumps, and I do not like it. Slither. Yeah. Slime. Yeah. Don't do that. <laughs> Uh, I did the Harry Potter uh, house test Slithering. on Pottermore. <laughs> what what house are you? I'm sl- sl- <laughs> <laughs> I'm Ravenclaw, guys. Yeah. I'm Ravenclaw. That's cool. <laughs> Just start lying because you don't want to say it. But uh, whenever I hear somebody like, especially in movies, this drives me insane because I'm like, dude, this is 2018. Nobody's saying this. <laughs> but like, you hear like a kid call their father Papa. Papa. That's a word that, like, I'm like, ew, this is gross <laughs> to me. Papa. It's better than daddy. Yeah. <laughs> Where you get pizza from? Pizza Hut? No, I'm getting it from daddy Father Jones. John's. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting it from Father John's, guys. I'm too embarrassed. <laughs> to get that's, it from that's, like, that's, that's a word that you use to address your grandpa, I feel like. Papa. Yeah, I feel like that's the word that you use if you were born in Austria. The only, <laughs> only time I've ever used it was just as a joke. I'm like, hey, Papa. <laughs> yeah. Pope. Papa. Papa Goins. But yeah, <laughs> dude, from now on, Papa Goins coming in red hot. Big <laughs> shout out to, to Papa Goins coming in. Dude, I'd rather call somebody Papa. <clears throat> Papa. Easily. Papa's yeah. a good old one. Yeah. yeah. Your old wrinkly old man. Yeah, dude. I call my grandfather Papa easily. What do you, what about you? Are you calling them? What do you call them? Grandfather? Uh, I call them grandma and grandpa. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, I do the same. Nothing okay. special. They in about midway through my childhood, they tried to get me to start calling them Oma and Opa. I was like, uh, <laughs> like, nah. Why are you changing the game, grandfather? And, uh, and so all my is your family German? Uh, they all speak German. Aren't those the German words for grandma and grandpa? Yeah, yeah. They German speak and German, not. and so they're uh, yeah. The, my uh, grandmother. She was. If you're Caucasian in 2018, chances are your grandparents are. German. Yeah, that's, that's they're German. I think you're, you're going to leave it as. <laughs> as a, if you're Caucasian, your grandparents probably are. Yeah, you probably. <laughs> are. Yeah, German Irish. I feel like everybody's uh, <laughs> German Irish. I have to hit them with. Um, uh, like I'm German Irish on my uh, maternal side, and then my my uh, dad's mom um, is straight up like can of tobacco cigar store native american nice she's very native american and then people are like oh yeah you're white so you're just gonna uh you know say that you're native american i'm like no wait till you see this woman <laughs> she is she went to a, you know she uh, grew up in west virginia uh, graduated in a high school with six people grades uh one through 12 wow uh, in the whole school and uh yeah and uh i actually ran into her last night and it turns out she lives Right across the street. Nice. So it's one of those things like, man, I haven't seen you in a couple of years. What have you been up to? She's like, oh, I live off Holman's Lane. I'm like, I live off Holman's Lane. She's like, I live right there. I'm like, I live right across the street. <laughs> nice. You know, MBD. Small no big deal. world, man. But guys, we're not here to just talk about. Oh, yeah. I got to talk about the beach. Yeah, fuck the beach, man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to lead the listeners on like, man, when's he going to start talking about how much he hates the beach? I, I hate it. I can't remember the everywhere. last time I went to the beach. Well, the live animals, bro. That's my thing. It's like yeah. I don't want to swim where, I don't want to swim where, if you will. But I don't want to swim with other beasts. Yeah, you know jellyfish freak me out. I Crabs, got the and crap shellfish. kicked out of me by a jellyfish when I was younger. He beat the crap out of you, dude. How he, big of a jellyfish? He, he got it? tangled around my leg. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> Dang. And yeah, a, that and a me surfer out. fella had a. I don't like stingrays. <laughs> a surfer fella had a pee on me. <laughs> No, he pulled it off. (laughs) Cure the sting. (laughs) Imagine that, like, brother, I I don't want to say this or nothing, but I was young, and a surfer, man, pissed all over me. (laughs) I want to know who made that up. Yeah, that's that's definitely a It's just somebody who wanted to pee on somebody he didn't like. And they got stung by a jellyfish. Uh, you know, if you, if you, let me pee on you real fast. It'll help. It's no, a, I heard. I heard. I heard. It's ammonia. It's good for you. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I, I would rather you just go buy some cleaning product or something that <laughs> also contains a high amount of ammonia and dump that on me. <laughs> yeah, the beach, man. I don't want to swim. For one, I don't have the body. I don't have the body for a public body of water, okay? Um, I got to swim. If I'm going to swim, I'm going to swim in the privacy of, you know, uh, a, a private pool, you know? My, uh, I go to my sister's house and swim over there when no one's at home. <laughs> you know, that's one of those things. I don't have the body for a public pool, but if I did, I definitely don't want to share that pool of water with you know the entire species. Earth. Yeah, I've watched Planet Earth. I know yeah. what's going on under there. Well, what just weirds me out is that 
when you're in that pool with all those other people, that water's touching everyone's butthole. <laughs> 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 well, dude, a public a public pool, man. In many ways, I feel like maybe the public pool is worse than the damn ocean because you know there's piss in that. Yeah, yeah, but they got chemicals to be. I mean, it's, if you're, if you're gonna live your life just scared of germs and stuff, then well, I, I'm not nearly Howie as Mandel. worried about other people's pee. We're as calling I you am. out, Howie Mandel. <laughs> <laughs> this bump me. Like you said, the critters and the things that are in the True. ocean. That's that's what I have the problem with, dude. Like those, I, you know, I've seen enough Discovery Channel to know what kind of stuff is floating around. In I've the seen deep enough sea. Discovery Channel to know that things swim up your pee hole. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not cool with that. Not cool at all. <laughs> I, I closed pin mine off going when I was going <laughs> just for safety, brother. <laughs> I do it for safety, get a brother. Zip tie, just nice and tight. Hell, <laughs> just, <laughs> just for safety, brother. You can't ever be too safe out there. You don't want the nothing ocean. crawling up there. <laughs> That's for sure. But guys, uh, yeah, Iron Falcon striking back, back red hot this summer, man. It's been it's been a year since we've we've sat down and and chatted, and you guys have been uh, pretty busy in the meantime, man. Uh, fill me, fill me in on the last year of the Falcon, brother. Well, um, so we did this. Let's po- get down to it, man. I can't be <laughs> talking about it, bodies dude. of water all, but I could talk <clears throat> for an hour for this for sure. First of all, I feel bad because we did this podcast last year, and we were like, "Oh yeah, we're gonna have a new EP out here in a couple of months." Yeah, you know, yeah, and I, was, I was promised everybody last fall, um, so that went real well. Obviously, um, <laughs> guys, you're gonna be so happy. <laughs> It's finally coming out. Finally. Um, we we had a bit of uh, issue as far as like our lineup goes. Um, we had a couple members out on you know hunting expeditions, and one was in jail for a little while, so that made things kind of rough. Yeah, and um, tell me about uh, also, too, I also heard about somebody just striking it, striking it rich. Yeah, Jake. Yeah, Doty knows a little more about that than I do. Yeah, uh, I know Jake, um, he won some money on a... Like a couple million off scratch offs, yeah, and uh, <clears throat> was like, all right, I'm gonna. He dipped out for a bit, came back. And, Obviously, he probably and, went to the ocean, and yep. uh, and was like, I'm gonna spend the. He ended up spending the rest of it on more scratch offs, thinking he could double down. Yeah, and just lost lost everything on on more <laughs> scratch offs. Yeah. Rookie mistake. Yeah, yeah. And Bush so I mean, leave. I think he made. Um. He made a couple hundred bucks off of it, yeah. which yeah. you know, cool. He he blew that money going to Japan, yeah, for a few months. So <laughs> yeah. just spent it in Japan, yeah. yeah. What's what's some what's a, a tried and true American like that doing in Japan, brother? I mean, everybody's got their own choices. That's true, man. Yeah. Hell, I'll never go there. I ain't gonna forget <laughs> Pearl Harbor ever. <laughs> My grandfather fought in this goddamn war, goddamn it, and I ain't gonna forget neighbor. <laughs> and then uh, and then our drummer Josh. Went on a hunting expedition out west. He was he was gone for how many months was he gone for? About five months, yeah. About five months. Went and shot himself. He got a huge freaking elk. It's up on his wall now. He didn't shoot himself. He shot an elk. Yeah, he, himself. yeah, yeah. No, he shot himself. He he's shot up, himself. He, he's up on his wall dot, right dot, now. Dot. <laughs> a beautiful elk. <laughs> yeah, shot himself. A big old elk. Bro, I heard that. I heard that like elk and moose, believe it or not, are like ferocious animals. Like some of the most like responsible for uh, like. In the top five, like animals responsible for human deaths. Really? Yeah. They got a crazy sound when they get all pissed off. I heard the hippo. You know, obviously people have heard about the hippo being ferocious, but I heard yeah. the elk, or it's either an elk or a moose, man. I heard that they just like take no shit. I know uh, meese are <laughs> <laughs> huge. Yeah, Jake. Could you imagine if you ran over a moose with your car? You wouldn't have a car. Yeah, anymore. you wouldn't have a car, dude. <laughs> yeah, there's some town um, somewhere where the moose get all crazy every year when they start going into heat. They just they'll some, fight anything yeah. that moves, dude. And they're like the size of houses, so I'll fight anything that moves. <laughs> <laughs> and then, I, and then uh, with Mike, uh, he spent a little bit of time in jail. Well, he had a he had a whole scheme planned out, and he he was getting away with it for a while. He was he has lights on his uh, Chevy Blazer. Yeah, of course. And he would he would uh, try to pull people over, uh-huh. and write them fake speeding tickets and say, "If you just give me fifty bucks cash, yeah. dude, classic con, the yeah. long con." Yeah, and if you, you give, give me fifty f- bucks, man, yeah. hell. But you know how sometimes if a if a cop's pulled over on the side of the road, another cop will pull behind him just to double down. Right. Yeah. And that's how he got busted. He got popped. <laughs> he he got popped, and, and so he spent a little time in jail for yeah. writing fake speeding tickets. <laughs> Man, the Falcon has been in full force over the last yeah. 365. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, we spend a lot of time with everybody. Us, man. Everybody missing, you know. We spend a little time 
right finishing up this album and getting everything done for right. it and so now we got the full lineup back and about to start playing ready some to shows. rock <laughs> ready to rock every day it was just like it's kind of hard with you not around i know you're in prison smiling down <laughs> 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 every day we pray for you i'll be missing you guys puff daddy featuring oh, yeah. the notorious big and faith evans no I couldn't name you one Puff Daddy song. <laughs> well, that's one. I'll be missing you. Sampling, uh, Every Breath You Take by The Police. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> Guys, I, I got I to gotta also give you a big ups, man, because uh, you came in here wearing a Gravedigger shirt. And that's the cool thing about podcasts. It's so visual. You guys have probably seen it already. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you came in wearing a Gravedigger shirt and my dad's jean shorts. <laughs> Red hot, man. You're making it happen here on this hot summer day. Yeah, I was down in uh, Nashville last weekend. Of course you were. At a monster truck show. <laughs> right. And uh, we, we have yet to go to a single monster tr- monster truck show, even though every oh. time we get together, we always talk about, like, well, I got to go. Mm-hmm. I got a good story for you, too. Uh, when I was down in Nashville, uh, nobody's going to know this. but This is exclusive, guys. <clears throat> so uh, set well, your recorders. See, I'm a big monster truck fan. I've been watching it since I was a little kid. And uh, there was this driver, Carl Van Horn, that I used to love. He was a he was a team gravedigger driver. Didn't always drive gravediggers, but drove gravedigger trucks. And uh, we're waiting outside. How many gravediggers are there? I don't want to I don't want to interrupt you, but you just said something that that literally uh, just piqued my interest. So he's a team gravedigger driver. There's probably multiple drivers of gravedigger, and there's probably multiple gravediggers. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. That look just the exact same. Yeah. See, some I, of them have little different tweaks to them like some of the drivers like the shorter wheelbase trucks some of them the longer some trucks are a little taller than the other ones well i imagine to be like hey i'm dale earnhardt jr i drove the number eight car and that's it like nobody else drives the number eight car yeah. and if you want to see it i'm my ass is driving it that's you know what, what i had always assumed as well so yeah. you're trying you're telling me like these people don't own their own monster trucks and they don't drive the monster trucks they own it's like it's it's like a team well dennis anderson is the owner of the grave digger. Gotcha. So, but, you know, Monster Trucks has gotten so big lately that they're doing multiple tours the same nights across the country. Oh, yeah. That so, makes sense. You can't be in eight places at the same time. So. Hell, brother. <laughs> so, so I saw this guy and I was I like, dug eight holes for eight <laughs> different souls here. <laughs> <laughs> but I saw, I saw this guy and I was like, dude, I think that's Carl Van Horn, which is one of my favorite names ever given to a human. And uh, <laughs> that's the name you check in. Like, if you want to give somebody a false name at a hotel, like, oh, what's your name? Uh, it's Carl Van Horn. Yeah. And so I'm sitting there. I'm like, dude, I think that's Carl Van Horn. And then, like, he comes walking up to me. And he says, hey, you from here? And I got nervous. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> Lie. And I was like, oh, wait, no, I'm from Louisville. <laughs> yeah, I totally am. Just kidding, guys. Uh, Carl Van Horn, I can't lie to you. I'm from Louisville. Yeah, and he was like, my sponsors haven't showed up. I got like 14 tickets. You want them? And he's like, do you know anybody who would want them? And I was like, I was calling people. But like, yeah, well, let me get the family on the horn here. We have 14, <laughs> so 13, 13 more doties. Yeah, I'd, I'd probably make that happen. No, it sucked because it's like it was two hours before the show. I live three hours away, so nobody I know could have. Right. I called a couple friends I got down in Tennessee, and nobody answered their phone. But like, guess who you didn't call? The one friend that would love to see a monster truck show. I know, man, but you wouldn't have been there. You wouldn't have been there. That's true. I wouldn't have been there. If I could have made it there. If it was four hours... Before showtime, I would have been like, dude, Sean, get down here now. <laughs> Sean, get your ace <laughs> down here, brother. We're going to see Grave Digger. Man, uh, well, that's a, that's a, that's a, that just blew my mind. That like, totally changed my whole perspective on things because it's like, oh, yeah, <laughs> there's eight, great, eight, eight Grave Diggers in eight different cities across the, you know, the world. Your whole at, life given is going to be different now. It is, it's true, man. <laughs> that's a great shirt, though. Well, thank you. Man, uh, I know I've probably asked you this before, but... Uh, Grave Digger's got to be your favorite, right? Grave Digger's one of my favorites. I Grave think. Digger's the undertaker of monster trucks. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's just a badass. Like, you, you, you know by the name, you know by the look that this guy is cool. He doesn't have anything to prove. Where somebody like, you know, Barefoot has a <laughs> has a lot that he's got to prove. You know what I'm saying? Is Barefoot even a thing? I think I asked you this last time. Is he still a thing? I know he's not in the Monster Jam circuit, but there's several several different like organizations that are all going on. He might be in one of the the small rinky dink fairground ones. Bigfoot's still around, obviously, right? Yeah, yeah. And Grave Digger is still around. What are some other What are some other monster trucks uh, that are that are in the circuit right now, brother? Well, right now you got his. Uh, Dennis Anderson doesn't drive anymore, so his son's driving Grave Digger. He's also got a daughter driving a Grave Digger truck. Uh, his other son's driving Son of a Digger, 
which is one of <laughs> one of my favorite ones. I have heard of that, yeah. Yeah. And then uh, there's uh, the Mutant, which is a Monster Energy okay. monster right. truck. That one's pretty good. So basically, there's three grave diggers, a Monster Energy and Bigfoot. That's it? <laughs> no. Like, there's got to be somebody that's like... Fancy schmancy. It's like, oh yeah, dude, I got a monster truck. I called it, you know. Well, there's some fancy schmancy new monster truck they just came out with in Nashville. It was a debut. It's a diesel powered monster truck. Really? And what's it called? Bro dozer. It was, Bro. It was dude. It was so lame. Bro dozer. And the worst part about it is, you know, I, I feel like Iron Falcon needs to start a side project with me called Bro Dozer Bro-dozer. immediately. <laughs> but the worst part beer. about it is that you know it just sounds like a diesel engine. So it's just going. <laughs> it just sounds like Prince. <laughs> yeah. And so just it's like, it happen, hitting the high notes. When he's driving, like it's quiet. You can hear it just hitting the ground. Yeah, I drive a, a, a Prius monster truck. <laughs> <laughs> Electric monster truck. Yeah. It's called, uh, <laughs> you know, it's like one of those things. It's just called Earth Conscious. <laughs> 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 the monster truck. It runs, uh, half of it runs on electricity, but once I get over to 30 miles an hour, it's going to kick into uh, diesel. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> But the, the engine's electric, so, qu- quiet as a church mouse. <laughs> Until I get up to about 30 miles an hour, which is rare because I'm in a small arena. <laughs> but yeah, okay, guys, uh, let's get let's get on track here because we're, we're having a, a fantastic time here. It's the summer of the Falcon, man, the Paul the Eagle interviewing yeah. the Falcon. So uh, you had a lot of ups and downs and misadventures with your... Um, with your lineup over the last year, uh, and but you got a new album that's coming out. Tell everybody about it because it's coming out July twenty seventh. No ifs, ands, or buts. None. No so, cuts. No buts. No coconuts. It's coming out <laughs> seven twenty seven. Listeners. Uh, so this is the first time that we've announced the name of it. So you get a little exclusive here. This is a worldwide exclusive. Go ahead. The Go EP, and hit them with it. It's called Neighbor of the Beast. <laughs> Perfect. Where where does that name come from? Uh, Obviously, the number of the beast, but do you ever have a neighbor that sucked that hard? <laughs> <laughs> so, do you want to know the real story Absolutely. behind that, guys? This uh, is this is the real exclusive. This is the meat and potatoes of the podcast. I was, give me the real story. So we've had we've had four of the songs on the CP written since the last time we did this podcast, right? right? And we were like, well, we'd like to have a fifth one on there. And I've been struggling to come up with ideas. So I have you know this. A folder just full of different guitar riffs that I've recorded on my computer. And, of course, I had the name one Riff 666. Obviously. Obviously. Um, and then I was like, man, you know, I don't really like that riff that much. So I recorded a new one, and I just went with Riff 665. And then that ended up becoming uh, the song that is Neighbor of the Beast. Nice. Eh. And so that, that's kind of where it came from. I just started thinking, like, what could we name this? You know, I, don't, I can't come up with any ideas. And I thought 665... Neighbor of the Beast, right across the street. Yeah. It's perfect. Hell yeah! So, and I just like that name so much that uh, <clears throat> there's the EP title right Dude, there for you. I uh, mentioned this. I mentioned this off of uh, off off camera, if you will. But before we started recording, I was like, yeah, I had this idea. I was like, man, if I ever had a, uh, you know, just like a uh, one of those. Uh, Waterfront Wednesday bands, you know, just <laughs> a folk rock, whatever. I was like, I'm going to name it Beekeeper because. Of course, you'd have a folk rock band named Beekeeper. <laughs> Dude, better than Arcade Fire, if you ask me. Beekeeper, making it happen. And the album would be called Number of the Bees. <laughs> Perfect. I'm going to be laughing about that. Iron forever. Maiden, you old so and so, you have nothing oh, on Beekeeper. Man. We're going to rock your, uh, you know, we're going to rock your, uh, rock your socks off. Cowboy hat off. <laughs> because this is Waterfront Wednesday. <laughs> Just. <laughs> We're gonna mellowly rock your cowboy head off. No, and so, uh, but when when Chris sent me that song and and had uh, it titled "Neighbor of the Beast," I was not very into it. Into I, it at I first. I was into it as uh, as you'd think, brother. Yeah. And then, like, the more I started thinking about it, and then the more, you know, we were talking about maybe naming the album that, and I, the more I started like thinking of what the cover of the album could be. Right. The more I was like. Okay, yeah. I mean, what I also too love about the imagery uh, when you keep saying neighbor of the bees is like, I'm not the bad guy here. I'm just the neighbor. Yeah, of, just, like, my neighbor just sucks time. that bad. <laughs> I'm not the bad guy here, but my neighbor sucks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. That's awesome, man. Um, 
but yeah, uh, I'm I'm uh, super stoked for everybody to hear. But I've been listening to it. Uh, you sent me an email with all the exclusive tracks. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, and uh, I'm stoked on it. Also, too, before we uh, get too far into the podcast, I want to say this, man. It's July third. I can't believe as three American patriots like us didn't bring up the fact that tomorrow is uh, Independence Day. I'm already ready for it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Are you stoked? Oh, yeah. I'm stocked. I spent almost three hundred dollars on some fireworks this year. <laughs> You're that, guy. <laughs> I You're that guy that buys the fireworks, dude. I freaking love it. Do you? I, I had a feeling that you would be, so I wanted to talk to you about Fourth mm-hmm. of July. Because to me, like I've always been the guy that like will go to a party, and uh, I'll be, I'm also that guy that will, uh, you know, uh, find an excuse to drink. Um, but I'm <laughs> I'm not that guy that invests a lot of money in fireworks. Because many times, like, there have been some, like, Thunder Over Louisville, for example. If anybody has ever seen me at a Thunder Over Louisville party, you know that I've drank all day long. And then, like, hey, the fireworks are going. And I'm like, yeah, I'm not going to walk. I'm not going to walk <laughs> down to the riverbed. I got a bird's eye view. I'm not going to walk. It's cool. Yeah, hey, I didn't see it. I'll miss it. it. But I saw him did. Oh, hell yeah. So so you're you're a fireworks guy. Yeah. yeah. See, but I don't like Thunder. Yeah, if if there's not a chance of me blowing my own hands up, then I don't like being a part of it. Like, I gotta get my it, hands dirty, dude. For real, I do not care watching somebody else set off fireworks, but if I can throw a mortar out just like a grenade with no tube to shoot it up, yeah, I I'm feel like that's the best part, man. <laughs> that's the uh, the thrill, man. Like the thrill of uh, the unknown. Like, hey, man, is this going to be the day that I lose one of the digits? <laughs> On yeah. my hand, on my right hand, or, my, or not, you know. My favorite part about every Fourth of July is just the bootleg fireworks that you have no idea what they're going to do when you set them off. Yeah, that's the best part. Uh, I, I actually have a video of uh, was it, was it last year or the year before? We I, were I all, think it was two years ago. Two years ago, I went and just bought the cheapest, like those cardboard helicopter ones. Right. And, yeah. And we were out on board and just setting them off. And I actually have on the video of one of them exploding and flying and hitting me. <laughs> yeah, that's the best part. Like you buy, especially like the helicopter ones. I, I remember those as a kid. It'd be like, all right, yeah, well, uh, let's go ahead and set it off. I'll run away. And then that's the firework that goes right into your grandmother's face. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's the one that has like a one track mind. It's like, I'm going to, mm-hmm. I'm going to ruin the 4th of July for somebody. <laughs> That's and, what those helicopters do. And, yeah. the, and that's what I find entertaining. Yeah. Dude, I will tell you, when I was a kid, I don't even know if they make these anymore because I haven't seen them uh, recently at all. But uh, the firework that I love the most is um, this little thing where it was like... Um, the snake? A, a little too... Oh, dude, <laughs> hell. I love to light off those little snake pucks. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man, look at that. It's like a turd. They should just be called turds. They don't look like snakes at all. No snake looks like this. But um, they're like little mortar things that you'd shoot up in the air, and then there would, uh, you know, they would explode. It would be cool. But then it would have a, a like a little uh, army man figure. Oh, yeah, the parachutes. Oh, yeah. Like parachutes down. Yeah, I got a... I gotta... I got a whole cart full of those. <laughs> well, invite me over, guys. <laughs> this is going to be the best Fourth of July ever for me. Dude, they got a ton of them. They got some that's they got their army men on them, and there's ton. My siblings love the parachute ones. So, so do I, man. <laughs> I need to be a part of that family, bro. <laughs> Let me in. <laughs> but yeah, uh, that was my, always my favorite. I was like, man, okay, the parachute, cool. That's great. But yeah, the helicopter ones, man, it's a little too uh, edgy for me because I'm like, oh yeah, that's the one that's going to go straight into babies, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> like it's going to go into a, a crib or something. Like they just go into like the worst place possible. Like, oh, this is the one that your dog's going to eat. I remember one year we were hanging out with him and uh, Dodie and his siblings, and we were just lighting, popping the sticks off of bottle rockets and lighting fistfuls of them and throwing them at each other. Right, that's, as you would. Yeah, that's that's the best part. Yeah, you don't know where they're gonna Dude, go. I just I have I have a soft spot for drinking all day and blowing stuff up. Yeah, hell so, yeah. Obviously, Fourth of July is so my what favorite you're holiday. Is you're an American, absolutely, and so am I. <laughs> and I'm proud to through be and an through. American. <laughs> <laughs> One single tier. <laughs> Dude, somebody needs to, uh, listeners out there, uh, you need to make a, a YouTube video with Proud to be American in the background and just people getting seriously hurt by fireworks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure something like that exists. Something yeah. has to exist. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, so, yeah, Fourth of July coming up red hot. Fourth of July is coming up tomorrow, and you have something to celebrate. We do. Because what else is going on tomorrow besides, you know, America? It's going to be our birthday gift to America. Hell yeah. We're going to be releasing our new video. 
right? We'll tell everybody about the video. Tell everybody about the single. Do you want to tell the story? All right. So the the single is uh, <clears throat> the song is called Tennessee Sky. We'll be real. You'll get the twenty four hour exclusive. Oh hell yeah! Then it's gonna be the video will be released on the fourth of July. But the the story of the song is about me and Chris went down to Nashville one Saturday to get some Nashville hot chicken. <laughs> Absolutely. I yeah. got three hours with the chicken. Dude, we, we did. That was a real thing that happened. And the fireworks. Yeah. And that was it. Just went down there to get some chicken. But on the way back, dude, the freaking weather went crazy. <laughs> we were driving on the highway. He's got a video of it. But, like, we were driving, and, like, no joke, we saw two tornadoes start coming down. Yeah, poking down out of the clouds. That's which insane. I had never seen before in real life. Right. So that was... Of course, my first reaction was, oh, cool, pull my phone out and start filming, you know, stuff that's going on. And, and as it starts wisping yeah. down a little more, we're just kind of with, like, uh, with no regards to my safety at all. Fantastic. You know, actually, I uh, one time, like as a kid, I grew up, I was like, I had like this huge paranoia about weather, like mm-hmm. maybe because Twister had come out, you know, and I was like super afraid of, of bad weather and tornadoes and all this stuff. And uh, as a kid, like I spent many an hour, many, a, many an evening uh, being unnecessarily afraid. And then one time when I was an adult, like, I feel like we were really in the soup of it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like one time, uh, we're driving through Idaho and the entire sky is black, like black. Uh, and then peeking through that is like the red sunset. Like, so there would be like one hole in the sky where the red sunset is peeking through these black clouds. And I'm like, this seems like the end of the world. This seems <laughs> Armageddon in nature. And, uh, dude, everybody's phone was like going off. It was like, dude, tornado warning right now. Get get to shelter immediately. And we just drove through it. Yeah. And, and, and you know what? In the face of it, looking directly at it, I, I wasn't as afraid as I was when I was a kid. When I'd be like, oh, man, it's raining outside pretty hard and I'm afraid of tornadoes. <laughs> yeah. But man, that's crazy. So you guys, uh, well, here's a real question: How's the hot chicken? It was it was good. <laughs> it's it was so good. It, it lived I'm, up to the hype, dude. I almost pooped my pants in a music store. I feel like that would. <laughs> dude, I forgot about that, <laughs> dude. I had to run down the street. Like I, I seriously thought I was like, I was like, I got to go now. This and is so, a do do or die situation. <laughs> yeah, and so I was like, Chris, we got to go. I ran across the street, got in my car, got stuck behind a fire truck, started driving down the street, and I was like, dude, I'm not going to make it. And so I'm looking for a place to go to the bathroom. I'm like, dude, this is a big old busy public street. I'm sure no place has public restrooms. And then I saw a church, a church uh, bookstore. <laughs> Perfect. So I whipped in there, and I went in there, and I booked it, and I was like, excuse me, ma'am, do you have a restroom I could use? And she's <laughs> like, oh, yeah, right there in the back. I'm just, just, just full sprint. For the glory of Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude. Dude, were, I got to call an emergency council with Count Dooku. <laughs> dude, it, it was rough, but luckily that happened because... For all you Star Wars dorks out there <laughs> listening to this podcast. <laughs> I was all clear driving back, but yeah, when we were driving back, like you're saying, we started getting notifications on our phone, like tornadoes in the area. Well, it, it was it was funny too because you know we're driving back, it's black as night outside, it's raining hard. Right. We stop at a gas station, and you know we go in to get some snacks or whatever for the road trip back. And uh, beef jerky, pork rinds. Obby. Absolutely, yeah. As we're coming back out though, like the rain stops, the sky starts, you know, kind of clearing up. It's still nice and cloudy and dark, but the girl at the cash register is like, "Oh, it's a bad sign. There might be some tornadoes." And no joke, as soon as we get back on the road, not 10 minutes down the road, there's one after another. Yeah. So And so me and Chris um, took it upon ourselves <laughs> to, uh, to, to handle that situation. To film this documentary yeah. yes. for the so, music video for Tennessee Sky. And so what, what we did is, um, I mean, I've seen Twister. I know what to do when a tornado comes. You tie yourself to a pipe. Easily. You just strap your belt to a leather uh, you strap your leather belt to a lead pipe. Yeah. Yeah. That's how you survive. That's what you do. And so. That's one on one, guys. Yeah. Take our word for it. <clears throat> and so me and Chris had pulled off the road on like a small kind of gravel road. They had some, you know, the little pipes on the side for the gas lines and stuff. I was like, I'm sure this will hold. So we, I mean, Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I'm <laughs> sure it will. And so, I mean, I don't weigh a lot. So if a tornado even picks me up and is trying to take me, I mean. Shit, man, you could zip tie yourself to a lead pipe, yeah. I feel like. You'd yeah, be all I'll right. Be, I'll be all right. You'd be all right. Me, on the other hand, yeah. my fat ass is going with the zip tie. <laughs> I need a good old fashioned leather belt. <laughs> and so when me and Chris were driving, um, we took it upon ourselves. Like, dude, we got to, you know, there's. We got to do something about this. Yeah. So we pulled over and uh, strapped ourselves to the pipe and just, yeah. I, do, I, I was swinging. <laughs> I was swinging, brother. Swinging yeah. on this tornado. And, uh, 
I think I scared him because he went he went back up. And you so. like Pecos Bill out there, just <laughs> riding on it. That was the that was the uh, American folk tale where the guy rode a tornado, right? Pecos Bill. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have seen. Uh, it's it's ringing some bells, tale, but right, uh, Patrick what, Swayze. I don't know. No, probably not. God, you guys don't know what I'm talking about. Patrick Swayze, Paul Bunyan, and. Uh, Patrick Swayze, Paul Bunyan, like I'm gonna give, like, <laughs> I'm not gonna give like you know Oliver Platt his due or whatever, and John Henry, yeah, American Tale or Tall Tale, right? Yeah, well, I cannot it, believe you guys haven't seen you, it. You're talking about We're watching somebody, it right after this podcast. <laughs> you're talking about somebody riding a tornado. That's definitely ringing some bells for me. Yeah, Pecos Bill, man. It would yeah. have been. It would have been when I was a kid. I barely yeah. remember it. You guys are the Pecos Bills. Yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah. You but, guys like the Buffalo Bills <laughs> when it comes to riding tornadoes. <laughs> We but, get we get to the big show and then blood. Yeah, but this the video we did is pretty much a, a documentary of exactly what had happened. Yeah, shot uh, by shot, a uh, frame for frame. Yeah, yeah exactly. Out there. Well, guys, I I think that we shouldn't we shouldn't let the listeners uh, sit any longer in anticipation, dude. They're probably uh, riding a, a, a tornado like wave of anticipation, <laughs> ready to hear this. So let's go ahead and hit them with a hit them with uh, the hot new single. Coming out tomorrow, guys. You got to see this video. I've seen it ahead of time, and uh, the footage is stunning, uh, striking to say the least. Uh, you got to definitely want to check it out. But, guys, this is Iron Falcon with Tennessee Sky.
everybody. That was Iron Falcon taking you to Toons Farm, taking you to Toontown here with Tennessee Sky, man. Is that a Clay Neville's original? Oh, yeah. Clay, Clay Neville Toontown. definitely made Toontown. <laughs> and I've been calling it Toons Farm lately, which yeah. is uh, obviously a, an homage to uh, Bum Wine from your local grocer's uh, freezer. <laughs> <Boots Farm. laughs> what, did, what did we call it last podcast? Was it a tune bag? I don't remember. I don't even remember. <laughs> Coming red hot out of the tune bag. <laughs> you just got a satchel full of tracks. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I have a messenger bag filled with tracks. <laughs> a messenger bag filled with tracks. And my laptop. Oh. And my iMac. Uh, yeah. But guys, uh, Tennessee Sky... Uh, uh, that that's the jam right there, bro. Uh, you, you, when I heard it, I was like, "Man, this reminds me of like all like the just stuff that I grew up loving, like uh, you know, like uh, Maylene and the Sons of Disaster." I do love Maylene, dude. Who doesn't? <laughs> it's the it's the first track that I've come out with in a while that I've really been um, proud of. I guess even though it's kind of a silly song, you know, I'm, I'm much more proud of the guitar work on right. that song and the rest of the EP than I ever was with any of our older stuff. I feel that. You ever feel like sometimes, like if you're really, really uh, good at your instrument, you have to make up for it by writing ridiculous songs, like Les Claypool from Primus or Frank Zappa, yeah. or you know Captain Beefheart. Like if you're really good at what you're doing, you gotta you gotta compensate by just like <laughs> <laughs> writing songs that are ridiculous. Well, that's that's the one thing my aunt always told me that she can't stand music where it's just comp it's just complicated to be complicated. Right. Yeah. She's always just told me just because you can. Doesn't mean you should. That's, yeah, you should. That makes sense. That's kind of why I got sick of playing death metal too, man. I was tired of just trying to write stuff that was just fast and hard, just for the sake of writing stuff that I'm was gonna, fast I'm and gonna hard. I'm going to make ten thousand notes here. Yeah, and they're not going to mean anything. The thing is, is like, especially with metal, it's like, dude, you, there, there are some bands that are so amazing, and then you have ACDC, yeah. who is like maybe in the top five most amazing fucking hard rock, heavy metal, whatever type bands of all time, and they're just. You know, you they're just chords, chords, a few it, chords, man. and then they wrote the same song 400 yeah. times and made it 400 different hits, and they're all <laughs> badass. Well, not to mention, like, I'm not even that good at guitar to begin with, so I just felt like it was futile to try to keep up with... Uh, don't sell yourself short. I, dude, don't, I don't know about you're it. You're the jam. You better <laughs> shut up. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, I feel that. But, uh, guys, uh, you have a, a video that will be pr uh, premiering tomorrow, guys. If you love the song, this you got the 24-hour exclusive uh, on Tennessee Sky. And tomorrow, the video will release on America's birthday, July 4th. It is. And you're going to want to check it out because you're going to want to see exactly what went down yeah. in Tennessee when me and Chris were coming back. Why don't you tell, why don't you tell the listeners out there about the video? Uh, the video, well, it's it's us playing in the rain, just playing our instruments and... I had to. Uh, I got real lucky because I didn't want to ruin my drum set. Yeah, obviously. So I was looking around at drum sets to buy, and I'm like, man, it's like to get at least a decent look. So you had drum to use set. mine. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to ruin my great drum set, so I had to use yours, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> no, so I'd been looking around for just uh, just a drum set, and everyone's like two hundred fifty, three hundred dollars. I'm like, do I really want to spend that much money just to break it? Right. And so I was like, yeah, you know, what? I'm just gonna look on Facebook. And so I made a post, and I was like, anybody got a drum set I can ruin? And this guy was like, I got a five-piece, a black Mapex kit. I'll save it for 50 bucks. Oh, uh, that's a deal. Mapex like, is the jam. I was like, oh, okay, I'll take it. And so that's what we used Did in the video. Did you keep the kit afterwards? I got it sitting on our fire pile. <laughs> oh, man. Heck, you didn't you didn't church it up, put some uh, new rims on that Dude, thing? that thing got... <laughs> By the end of the video, it was trash. Yeah. yeah, it was done for. I do have. I That's got what happens when you got an F five in your video, bro. Yeah, yeah. Chris dressed up as an F five and <laughs> and lit that kid up. <laughs> lit that kid up. Um, on the on the topic of instruments that we trashed, uh, quick shout out to Cliffy Madden. Yeah, big for, shout out uh, Cliffy Madden for putting that guitar together for me for um, the video. Okay. Yeah, well, he actually he Give that us was the background deets on that. That was the same guitar that we used in the video for the Southern Way. Um, okay, that he filmed. And uh, we needed one that I could just get wet and ruin because I was, you know, getting sprayed with blood and all this kind of stuff while we were doing it. Um, so he like painted that for me, and it's got you know Iron Falcon and Rebel Forever on it, and it looks super good, but it just didn't work. 
Right. So obviously that's the it's one. good for the video, yeah. not for the live performance. So that's yeah, dude. I I've thought for a while about just replacing the electronics in it and playing that thing live. But you know what? Just uh, put it on back and track. Yeah, and play it live. <laughs> <laughs> it's 2018, guys. Just put it on the back and yeah. track. So we uh, we broke that same one back out though and used it under the the rain and all that kind of stuff for this last video. Mm-hmm. And that's, we uh uh. I fist fight or tornado in that video. <laughs> Guys, uh, oh, yeah. let's not beat around the bush here. Uh, you're going to see a grown man fist fight a tornado. <laughs> <laughs> I had to tell, I had oh, to tell the story so exactly how it happened. Exactly how yeah. it happened. Yeah. Uh, he's going to, uh, uh, you know, take care of business with extreme prejudice on this F5. <laughs> well, you got to think, man, an F5 comes through and just ruins everybody's stuff. And it's exactly. like, I like extreme weather. I don't like watching people. Get their homes destroyed. I like to live life to the extreme, but but brother, if you take my if you take my trailer away, you're oh. on my shit list. <laughs> yeah, and so my whole thing was like, I gotta protect this town. Yeah, I feel that man. I feel a hundred percent. Who you know, you don't want to um, you don't want to see uh, bad things happen to uh, good people. It's true. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Now. Do- if that if I was heading towards a bunch of city slickers, I might just let it go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, New York City, yeah, we're just gonna, we're gonna clean up this town. <laughs> this town needs an enema. <laughs> Jack Nicholson, Batman, nineteen eighty nine. Guys, check it out. Um, but yeah, uh, and dude, outside we you know we're, we're talking about the video and uh, that tornado man. It's uh, it's uh, brilliantly done. Uh, I love. <laughs> I love uh, how you reenacted the tornado, um, almost frame by frame reenactment. It's like yeah. the it's like the remake of Psycho from the mid nineties. It's just like kind of a shot for shot reenactment of what really happened. Uh, you know, uh, I, I I really enjoyed it. Um, but also too, we were talking outside. Uh, I don't. I didn't want to do the segue because you're like, I don't want to see bad things happen to good people. I, I think I actually said it, and I was like, I'm going to hit this segue here. But <laughs> here's the deal, because uh, we were talking, we're, we're Definitely fans of uh, uh, metal, rock, um, southern, country, all that sort of thing, uh, because we, we we are just products of uh, you know w- where we grew up. But uh, we gotta—I I feel like I have to mention, dude—the the passing of uh, Vinnie Paul from Pantera as a drummer, mm-hmm. as a fat guy. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> this is a big loss for me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like I just felt like I was like, dang, dude, this is guy that's holding it together, dude, and uh, and he passed away, man. What, what did you guys hear about that? Obviously, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. You big Pantera fan? Uh, I wasn't, but You're, then I was. Yeah. <laughs> so like, I grew. <laughs> but then one day, well, because like they what, kicked my ass, and I understood. <laughs> the, like what happened was, I heard everybody talking about how awesome Pantera was, how good of musicians they were, how great he was at guitar, how great of a drummer he was, and the first song I ever heard from them was "Walk." Right. And I was like, "This the, sucks." Da, 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 da. <laughs> <laughs> Like the drum beat in that song is just home, boy. the drum beat was boring. The guitar work was boring, and I was like, I don't want to listen to anything else from them. And it wasn't up until like 2012 when our bassist now showed me some Panteras because I was telling him how much how boring. I was like, how can anybody say that they're good? And of course, I wasn't and I didn't really listen to him. And he and then uh, you heard Cowboys from Heck, <laughs> <laughs> and that's when my life changed. Dude, and what's that? There's one song where I have no idea what he's doing with his feet. That bum, 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 yeah, exactly. That's the best part about it. Yeah, from one drummer to another, that's the best part about it. You don't even know what the heck is going on. Yeah, no joke. I sat there. I first, I was just like, okay, well, I guess I was wrong. Yeah, <laughs> you know what? I was wrong. You know, the first time I'm going to tell you this story, which I didn't plan on telling the story, but the first time I, I uh, ever heard about Pantera and what kind of got me into Pantera was, uh, so I was a rocker, you know, back in the day when I was a kid. I was in a rock. I was a big rocker. And I watched, uh, I, it's either on Mighty Ducks 2 or Mighty <laughs> Ducks 3. <laughs> but there is a, literally, there is a scene where Charlie from Mighty Ducks is trying to mack on this uh, fly honey. And <laughs> she's like, he's like, oh, you like music? She's like, yeah, I love music. And she's like, I like Pantera. And he's like, oh, I love Pantera. And that was the moment I was like, I don't know who the hell Pantera is, but I gotta check these people out. <laughs> and then that was when I first got into Pantera. It was uh, from Mighty Ducks. So a big shout out nice. to Emilio Estevez for making this happen for me. It changed your life. Changed my whole life. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, the the Iron Falcon. Okay, we, uh, Tennessee Sky got a new video coming up tomorrow. You got a new album that's coming out seven. 
27. Let's talk about some of the songs on the album. Uh, let's actually get down to some serious business because I just enjoy having you guys here on the studio. So we're just talking all you know, all over the place. But uh, I want to talk about some some of the stuff. So, you know, last year we actually played uh, a track. We played Bard Party last That's year. Right. So for listeners, if you haven't checked it out yet, go back to the original episode with Iron Falcon. You can hear Barn Party. Um, but there's some, and, and Tennessee Sky, um, you know, obviously we're, we're listening to that. But I want to talk about some of the other tracks, man, especially uh, Country <laughs> country Ghost, which uh, is something that you played for me in uh, in the off time, you know, uh, in between uh, podcasts, which I love so much. Tell me about Country Ghost. Tell the listeners about, about it. Well, <clears throat> Country Ghost is another true story of... Uh, Absolutely uh, factual. Yeah, I did not... Um, I didn't believe in, in any kind of, like, supernatural stuff for the longest time until... Um, you know, sometimes you just go out looking for something and you find it, and then other times it just kind of happens. And uh, just there, throughout my entire life, I've just had these weird instances where I've come like close to. De- I had these really cl- near death experiences where I've actually seen. Yeah, um, I've seen the bass drop. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually seen um, and been, you know, guided and helped along by these country ghosts. I got gotcha. you. Like, Who are some of the country ghosts that you have, uh, you know, interacted with over the years? Uh, Hank Williams. Yeah, obviously. Waylon Jennings. Oh, yeah. Uh, Johnny Cash. Mm-hmm. I've heard of him. And then uh, the one that I've, I've gotten help from, but I didn't even want help from him, was Chris Ledoux. <laughs> I, mean, I, I freaking hate Chris Ledoux. And I was just like, if I wasn't about to die, I'd whoop you <laughs> right I'd now. I'd whoop your ass. <laughs> You didn't get you didn't get help from the ghost of Chris Gaines. <laughs> no. that's. A, I mean, I'm, I'm not saying that you know I'm done getting help from ghosts. Yeah, so we'll, we'll see. But that's just the ones that I've come in contact with so far. Like this is this is uh, this is those were the four. Yeah, these are the ones that helped you out. Yeah, can't talk any shit on them, man. They, yeah, they saved I mean, there was, there's been two times where I've fallen asleep while I was driving. Yeah, where I actually woke up in the passenger seat. <laughs> Chris Ledoux took the wheel. Yeah. <laughs> uh yeah, yeah, those expeditions. Chris Ledoux take the wheel. Yeah, that that happened. And yeah. I was just like, hey on it. Is that is that really Chris Ledoux? Like, oh, oh heck. <laughs> just all right, get out of here. I'd Look, I appreciate you looking out for me, Ledoux, but <laughs> we're never gonna be straight. We're never gonna be friends, okay? Yeah. So stop trying to make this happen. And then when I was younger, um, I was up in a barn in a, like a hayloft. Sure. And uh, you know, I'm just up there playing with little, you know, toys and stuff and I tripped over one of them and fell off the top of the the, the top loft which happens yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah i grew up uh, on a farm we had a we had a barn and there was a hayloft that you yeah. definitely uh could fall out i mean of. Yeah. who who hasn't that happened to really that's so yeah. true yeah yeah and so i i came i fell off the top and i got uh somebody caught me I thought it was my dad at first until i got set down and looked around it was johnny cash oh man <laughs> You know, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you the story. I'm going to go OT here. I'm going to go. Uh, I want to take it into a different direction. But speaking of that story, that's so weird that that happened to you. Because Did that happened uh, to you as well. No, it, my cousin Ryan. Big shout out, Ryan Disponent, uh, big listener of this podcast. So big shout out to you, cousin Ryan. But he's he told me the story multiple times, and his father has too. Uh, and I love this story. Is uh, his dad? Uh, you know, when Ryan was a kid, his dad took him to go to pro wrestling. And uh, around here was like Memphis wrestling, which was, uh, you you know, like a territorial type thing. Anyway, uh, you know, a wrestler was coming out and everybody was like, you know, holding their hands out in the aisle way or whatever. And my cousin Ryan's dad, my Uncle Jimmy, shout out to Uncle Jimmy. Uncle Jimmy held held Ryan out, much like Michael Jackson dangling a baby (laughs) (laughs) uh, out uh, when a wrestler was coming out. And uh, these people like rushed, like kind of rushed that area, and he dropped my cousin Ryan, and he was caught by Jerry the King Lawler. (laughs) So, (laughs) shout out to Jerry the King Lawler for saving my cousin Ryan's life. He's now an adult and uh, making making moves happen. But yes, Jerry the King Lawler also too in a hayloft like situation uh, (laughs) (laughs) caught. Caught yeah. Uh, yeah. my cousin Ryan. That's, that's what I'm saying, man. Who has that that's not true. happened to? You, you yeah, know? that's that's old hat by now. No, it's, not happened to? it's just one of those things where it's like, even if it hasn't happened to you, I'm sure you know of somebody. Who's... <laughs> yes, exactly. You obviously know. 
a person or two. Just like me, you know, I'd share that story. It hadn't happened to me personally, but, yeah, but a you... friend of mine. A, a relative of mine. <laughs> it's got to be within your some some. If you go back, do your genealogy work somewhere along your bloodline. Somebody's been dropped and caught. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. If you go and do your, uh, you go to uh, uh, what is that? Ancestry dot com. Yeah. If you go to ancestry dot com. Mm-hmm. Surely there's a document about it. Twenty three that me. you can look up. A census record <laughs> that you can look up about it. Yeah, dropped off the old wagon on the plane. Yeah, fell off wagon, caught by ghost. <laughs> 1910. <laughs> and that's the thing is that everybody thinks that, you know, all ghosts are bad, but some of them... No, nah, dude. Some Casper. of them will try. Some of them are badass. Yeah, but when Casper... All, Casper was like... I think that's the he proper was, ratio of ghosts. He was the friendly ghost. He was, but how many bad ghosts were in his crew? He had, what, like three three uncles or yeah, three, brothers-in-law? Or so three. obviously, when it comes to Casper, one out of every four ghosts are bad. Yeah. Or one out of, out of every four ghosts are good. I think that's yeah. accurate. Three out of every four are bad. Yeah. 25% of the time you're going to get a good ghost, and yeah. 75% you're going to get assholes. And the worst part <laughs> about it is sometimes the douchey ghosts will pretend to be mm. a good ghost. Mm. Yeah. So, like a lot of, like, and there have been times that my cousin, the same kind of Hayloff situation, same fell Hayloff out. scenario, bro. Yeah. Uh, and she actually passed away, but uh, she fell off the loft, and her dad was standing at the bottom and was going to running over to catch her, like the old baseball kind of situation. And gotcha. That, a ghost said, I got it, I got it. And then, the, so the dad backed off, and the ghost just moved his arms. Oh, man. Oof. Classic Atlanta Braves error yeah. uh, <laughs> type scenario here. Yeah. You know. so, and he was part of that 75%. Of <laughs> A very Javi Lopez-like um, ghost yeah, that so. just, uh, you know, may, may have uh, caused the error. Well, guys, uh, this is definitely... Um, some insight for you. So I'm sure you guys have had a supernatural experience. Who hasn't in this day and age? I mean, it's 2018, you know. But uh, yeah. So uh, wh- where can people, as we're as we're kind of ramping down here, where can people find the Iron Falcon on the internet? So have you? Ever, yeah, you guys are on the internet, right? You guys have heard of that. We we are on the internet. Do you guys get AOL yet? Um, they sent me a floppy disk. <laughs> Uh, in my in the mailbox, I don't know if you guys got it yet. I have I can have five <laughs> now, so pretty tight. We uh we we didn't like the internet yeah for well, a long time. Don't trust you, but you know we had a friend who was like, hey, if you dudes want to do anything with your music, you got to learn how to use this. Yeah, we can't just keep we we used to just tape our 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 discs on the back of cows Did and open up off, yeah. open up the gate and just watch them go. I yeah. used to record all our music on a Talkboy tape recorder. <laughs> <laughs> That's how this podcast started, just on a Talkboy tape recorder, brother. So we uh, we learned how to use the uh, Facebook. Yeah, I've I think heard of that's that. what it's called. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's that's probably what we do. That's that was the first one we learned. So most of our stuff's there. I um, gotcha. The uh, the in- Instagram is that in- what it's Instagram. called? Instagram. Yeah, the inst- yeah, whatever. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Uh, like Golden Grams, but Instagrams. Yeah. You know, it's a new cereal. You don't even. It comes with milk in the bag. <laughs> yeah. Already in the bag. <laughs> Could you imagine if you got cereal with milk already in the bag? <laughs> <That's> <laughs> gross. The biggest bummer. <laughs> you know, do you, uh, I don't know, because uh, I'm a little bit older than you guys, but uh, did you guys have uh, bagged milk when you were in school? I don't think so, no. Uh, dude. We uh, had little cartons. Huge thing in Canada and other schools uh, around the United States will uh, have a bag of milk. You got to buy a yeah. milk bag. And actually, the first time I ever saw Milk Bag was in uh, A Hard Day's Night, uh, the Beatles movie. So this is mid-60s. This dude goes to a vending machine and orders a, like, from the vending machine, selects a selects milk, and it comes in a triangular bag. I don't think I could deal with that. But I, f- I will say, if you had cereal <laughs> and the milk already comes in the bag, that would be cool. But it was, uh, obviously, it's going to be a bummer. I'm not going to drink bagged milk. <laughs> I've heard that's a, a popular thing in other countries. Moral of the story, bro. If you want me to get, if you want me to get milk, you better church it up. You better church up the packaging because if you put it in a plastic bag, it ain't happening. <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, but yeah, you can find us on Instagram. It's a Iron Falcon official. Yeah. If you're trying to keep up with news, Facebook or Instagram is the best way to go. Um, Absolutely. If you're looking to hear our music, we'll, we'll be on YouTube. Um, Bandcamp is one that we use frequently. Um, and we'll be, uh, yeah, we'll be distributing it to, you know, any major listening service, Spotify, Apple music, Amazon, whatever you're on. Fantastic. So, 
It'll all be there. You, you, you must have like a smart uncle that's like putting that on for you yeah well we've we've got a farm hand that is a little more savvy with uh <laughs> a little more savvy with, than he's we a, are he's a bit tech savvier than, than we are <laughs> he's, so. he's a younger dude and he's you know from the city so I we kind of have to rely on him for that sort of stuff but absolutely yeah. city slicker man. you know, you yeah. know that's the thing some of them some of the city slickers ain't bad <laughs> some of them <laughs> We ain't talking about everyone. Uh, this, dude, of course. this dude's a good dude. He's a reformed city slicker. <laughs> right. <laughs> he, he he grew up there. Uh, he was born there, but then he left immediately. Yeah. But yeah, well, guys, definitely check out Iron Falcon here. And uh, if you like what you heard today, definitely check out the Sean vs. Wild podcast. If you haven't already, like, share, and subscribe. Tell your friends about it. Uh, all the Iron Falcon links will be in the show notes, guys. I do not disappoint you. Every single week, uh, I'm making it happen here. So definitely check out Iron Falcon. Definitely uh, check out uh, Tennessee Sky. That's going to be uh, debuting to the world tomorrow. And uh, really importantly, enjoy your 4th of July, man. This is America's birthday. Hell That's right. Hell yeah. You know what I'm saying? Hell woo! We got, we got uh, parachuting army men. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Well, let me ask you: What are some of your before we before we just immediately cut this off? What are some of your favorite fireworks? Man, I'm just a fan of bottle rockets. Bottle rockets. Like I said earlier, you pop the stick out of them, light them, and just throw them. Do you think bottle rocket is better than a Roman candle? Uh, yes. Yeah. Roman candle is pretty. Well, I mean that you can be pretty accurate with a Roman candle. That's that's the part that I don't like, man. I like not knowing what's about to happen. I love the unexpected. Yeah, just, just, hey, just about every year with a Roman candle, though, I, n- I can never remember which end it shoots out of. <laughs> so I just kind of hold it <laughs> and just hope, hope for the best. I want to tell you this story before we uh, ride off into the sunset. Is uh, when I was a kid. This is something that will stick with me, obviously, because I'm telling you the story now. Uh, I was about four, five, six years old. And uh, we went to uh, we went to uh, a, a friend of my mother's for Fourth of July, and they're lighting off fireworks, and they they did it up big. Um, their next door neighbor had a German Shepherd that was a retired police dog, and he like sniffed out explosions and all that other sort of thing, explosives. I so he say. ate all your fireworks. Literally, this dog. Uh, at one point in the night, like there was like a Roman candle that's like going off. This dog literally ran Ooh. across the front lawn and picked it up in his mouth <laughs> and ran off with it. And it's like, dude, you have you have uh, flames coming out <laughs> and like literally could hit anyone because this dog is, mm-hmm. uh, you know, making it happen. But yeah, true I story. Saw a video on the internet of a dachshund doing something similar. Yeah, dude. <laughs> America is the goofiest thing, <laughs> guys. Uh, one last thing. So uh, we're three patriots here, man. What do you have to say to the listeners out there about America? It's Fourth of July, Third of July, technically, but Fourth of July is coming up pretty darn soon. It's just uh, happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday. <laughs> Celebrate America. it. Uh, I'm just, I'm, I feel very privileged and and uh, I'm grateful to to be living in this country. Proud to be an American. Can you close the podcast with that song? Yeah. Dude, I need like, to. Actually. Guys, yeah. this is Proud to be American by I don't know who sings that song. Dude, we originally, we almost Ooh. used it to open up our set. <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah, The Falcon is proud to be American, yeah. and so am I. Guys, thank you so much for checking out uh, this week's episode. Definitely check out Iron Falcon. Definitely check out the video for Tennessee Sky. It's awesome, and it's coming out tomorrow. Uh, on YouTube, or depending on when you listen to this, it's it, maybe it's already out. Uh, and uh, in the meantime, and in between time, have an awesome 4th of July. Happy birthday, America. This has been... Sean vs. Wild. The Sean vs. Wild <laughs> podcast. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> for listening DNN